It was raining hard in Frisco. I needed one more fare to make my night. A lady up ahead waved to flag me down. She got in at the line. She was gonna be an actress And I was gonna learn to fly She took off to find the footlights And I took off to find the sky I've got something inside me Not what my life's about Cause I've been letting my outside tide me over to my time to run And she said we must get together Though I knew it'd never be arranged And she had me twenty dollars for a 250 fare And said, Harry, keep the change And here she's acting happy Inside her handsome home Flying in my taxi, taking tips and getting stoned. I go flying so high when I'm stoned. Welcome to my channel, my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today we're going to look at an alternate version of a pen that's been around for a while. This is the Jinhao 51A. And along with the Hero 616 and the Wingsung 601, this Jinhao 51A is Jinhao's version of the ubiquitous Parker 51. All three pens have hooded nibs and are shaped very closely to the original Parker pen from the 1940s. However, this Jinhao, although it's still branded a 51A, has a number five size open nib rather than the hooded nib that was so revolutionary on the Parker 51 back in 1939. It also came in some very cool acrylics that remind me of some Pen BBS pens. This one reminds me of Sunset, and this one reminds me of Niangao. So I simply had to have them for the price. Thanks to pen friend Janice Butterworth, who loaned me her version of the Jinhao 51A, uh, which is hooded, so I can compare them. So let's take a look at these two interesting and perhaps even fascinating fountain pens right now. <laughs> so I've just been back from the mailbox, and mail is always a surprise because you never know when something might come used to be you'd get anxious about two weeks, two and a half weeks, and now it's six weeks. So this one actually came fairly quickly. I think it was about four weeks. But uh, let's see what's inside this package. I'm pretty sure I know what this is. Yeah, there's two pens here. inside their sleeves. These don't need any disinfecting because they've been gone for six weeks. And that is the Jinhao 51A. And uh, they don't say what kind of finish this is, but uh, this is reminiscent of Niangao. And I've got a, a new Pen BBS Niangao 355 coming soon, maybe in the next six weeks, and we'll see how it compares. But that's uh, very interesting. And this is a 51A that doesn't have a hidden nib, a hooded nib, and they were so inexpensive I decided to get two. The second one is reminiscent of a finish I don't have in Pen BBS yet. And it looks like Autumn to me from Pen BBS. And again, the number five style nib. So I'll clean these out. We'll ink them up and we'll put them through their paces. Something to look forward to. 
Okay, here we are with three Jinhao 51As. Two are mine, the Autumn and the uh, Niangao. And both are open, number five nib style. And one is Janice's pen in the identical Autumn finish, but with the classic Parker 51 style hooded nib and the long section. What I want to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen and show some size comparisons and some measurements and then provide a writing sample. And please stay tuned after the writing sample where I'll discuss what I like and what I don't like so much about these pens. I'm going to look at the autumn version of this pen as other than the resin, they are functionally identical. Let's look at the resin on both pens first. The resin is quite lovely and chatoyant, but it doesn't wow me as much as the resins from Pen BBS or Moon Man. From the top, we see a typical Parker style conical finial, which some call a jewel. And in some models of Parker 51s, this is an acrylic crystal uh, in different colors, similar to this Wingsong 601A. The finial holds the clip in place, and this is not your typical Parker style clip, which some Chinese Parker 51 clones use, like the Hero 616 and the Wingsong 601. The Jinhao uses a ball style clip with a Jinhao chariot logo. The clip is springy and with the ball end very usable. The cap is almost identical to a brushed stainless steel style cap of a Parker 51 and tapers up to where it meets the barrel. The end of the cap is branded Jinhao on one side, 51A on the other, and there is a embossed or etched line underneath. It's very attractive. There's a minuscule step down to the barrel, which again is shaped almost identically to the barrel of a Parker 51, except there's no breather hole at the bottom. The cap slips off with a clutch and clutch ring mechanism similar to the Parker 51, and reveals another major difference from the Parker 51, the open number five nib and tapered plastic section. This section is convex in shape, uh, but tapered, and ends at the nib, which is branded with the Jinhao chariot logo, Jinhao and an F for fine, and the typical Jinhao scroll work. I'm going to take a look at the Niango version here because it's not inked. I'm going to show you that the nib and feed easily unscrew from the section. Into a, a very nice um, nib assembly, which makes it very convenient for swapping. And you can just see the Jinhao Chariot logo on that nib collar. This is something that is typically Jinhao in my experience. Many models of Jinhao pens have standard size nibs that allow swapping in and out easily. Jinhao X450s, X750s, and 159s are justifiably praised and loved for being able to put Yovo, Bach, Schmidt, Knox, Nevisin, what have you, nibs into them. This is one of the advantages of the open nib version of this Jinhao 51A. Swapping nibs from a hooded nib version of this pen is possible, but not for the chicken hearted. He's buggered off. So he has, he's scoffered. Brave got off and run away. No! Bravely ran away, away. I didn't. The section unscrews to reveal a standard international Lamy style converter, which is branded Jinhao. The pen will accept standard international cartridges, but won't piggyback two on board. The cap posts deeply and securely in typical Parker 51 style, making the pen very nicely balanced in the hand. The section is smooth and well-sized to give a comfortable grip that is, of course, different than the hooded nib version. 
The other thing I should mention here as well is that the whole purpose of the revolutionary 1939 Parker design of the 51's hooded nib was to enclose the nib so it does not evaporate ink in the open air. This version will not behave that way, and although I've not used it long enough to compare, it's not unlike any typical open number 5 nib, and will behave the same, I suspect. I'm going to hazard an educated guess by extrapolating the facts about these two designs. Computer, extrapolate most likely composition of such entity. To posit that the hooded version of this pen will be more reliable than the unhooded design. By that same logic, I'll posit that the open nib will be less of a nail than your typical hooded nib. This style pen is a real option as an everyday carry. The clip works well, the pen posts securely and deeply, and they are workhorses that work first time every time. Plus, they are cheap like borscht, without being cheaply manufactured. The materials and fit and finish is top notch. This pen is available on eBay and Etsy for around $12 US. There are versions with plain finishes that sell for less. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here we are with the Jinhao 51A and a Hero 616, a Wingsong 601A, a Parker Sonnet, and a Pilot Metropolitan. Now let's look at them posted. And here are those five pens posted. You can see that the 616 is a real Parker 51 clone with the hooded nib, and everything about it is very, very Parker-like. It posts very deeply. The Wingsung 601A um, is not hooded like that. It's got a tubular nib on it, which is very attractive. And this has a, a gorgeous wavy gold pattern on the cap. Uh, but you can get this pen in the 601 version, which has the hooded nib very much like that. So they'll look almost identical here. And here, of course, is the Parker Sonnet with its number five nib. Very wide number five. And the Pilot Metro, of course, with its number five nib. These five pens here all post very deeply and very satisfyingly and are very well balanced in the hand uh, for this typical type shape pen. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. <laughs> And we're back with the writing sample portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the Jinhao 51A. This one is autumn. And it is a fine steel nib. The ink today, if I could spell ink, is that what made Britain great and sincerely a made of steel? Is Robert Oster. Muddy sand. And here is the test card for it. And here it is with Robert Oster Muddy Bucket. Or it could be a Robert Oster Muddy Bouquet. How do you spell bouquet? B U C K E T. <laughs> B U C K E T. Oh, bucket. <laughs> it's bouquet. If you want to be fancy about it. And here it is with KWZ, or Queasy, Aztec Gold, IG. That's an Iron Gall ink, and it isn't quite dry yet. Let's check the wetness. Not extremely wet pen, but it's not dry either. 
and I found some hooded nibs to be uh, quite dry. So this is, this is okay. I have not touched this nib in any way. Uh, this is right out of the box. So as to line variation, that is no pressure. And there is pushing it. Again, it's very stiff, but if you're into that kind of thing, it does vary a little bit. Let's uh, try the hooded version of this. There is no pressure, no pressure, pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, no line variation whatsoever, which is typical of a hooded nib. Let's listen to this right. It's very pleasant, very smooth, uh, relatively wet, and very comfortable in the hand. That's very nice. And as to reverse writing, yeah, not much at all, and it dries right out. And for some quick writing, feet is keeping up very nicely. There you go. The Jinhao 51A open nib, nib version. So what do I like and what do I not like about this pen? Well, uh, let's start with the likes because there are a lot of them. This pen style is very comfortable in the hand, very well balanced and very utilitarian. The finish actually is marvelous on both pens. And of course, you can get these pens in solid uh, versions as well. I've said before that I don't like the mixture of acrylic resin and stainless steel, but there's something nicely balanced about this design that doesn't make me cringe. I love the way the cap posts deeply and securely, and I like how I can get at that nib and feed assembly easily if I want to do some nib swapping. I also like that it is a standard international converter, cartridge pen. The Classic 51 is either an aerometric or a uh, vacuumatic uh, system. Uh, you can see the vacuumatic on the Wingsong 601A, where you pump the piston down. And of course, the aerometric is that... Uh, squeeze type fixed converter and mostly those filling systems are fixed in place. This model gives you the convenience of modern pens with the classic shape and feel of the Parker 51. Of course the price is something else I like here as well. Jinhao just continues to make low-cost pens with superior materials fit and finish. What do I not like about this pen? Well not much really. Considering it is a Parker 51 with modern features and at a sub $20 price tag, what's to hate? I personally like bigger pens than this, but to stick a pen in my shirt, pants pocket, or clip it to my journal on the run, this pen is hard to beat. And with all the finishes in both hooded and non-hooded versions, this is a collector's delight, especially at these prices. So there you have it. The Jinhao 51A non-hooded pen in autumn and Niango finishes. Thanks go out to Janice Butterworth for her generous loan of the Jinhao 51A hooded version for this review. 
And if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get an instant notification when new videos are posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.